Agonwall was map three, right? No idea. This is the first one I've seen. Okay, so you're running goats with an Anna? Which looks like? With a Moira. That? Oh, it was a Moira here, right? What's your... So that's... Well, I'm guessing you're going Zen. So why... Why do you pick the Moira instead? Uh, I've just been playing her for a long time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it yeah. looks like you guys have Lucio. I don't I'm also really aggressive with her, and I I don't know. I focus healers whenever it. So you guys are Moira. You're, you're, you guys are Moira Brig. Lucio is what I'm seeing, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. First mistake, in my opinion, anyway, is you guys are valuing the speed boost over the damage by Zen. And I don't like that. And one of the main reasons why is because goats by itself. The, think about the character, the goats characters, right? You have a Ryan Zarya Diva, Brig. Lucio Moira. Name one character that deals a ton of damage that's not a hundred energy charge Zarya. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, None I said to take the Zen over the Lucio whenever we played Horizon. Yeah. So that's never that's never something that I personally like to see. Um there's just not enough there's not gonna be enough raw damage and, and, and so one of the issues you're gonna run into when you're when you're running these kind of uh, these main heal goat comps is that if you always want to run a Zen with it because you simply won't have the damage to keep up and you're in your primary win, win condition. So like we have regular regular Zen um, Zen Lucio Brig goats, right? Your your main thing is disruption. You get in there, you go hard in there, right? You have health pool advantage. You go target something out, stun lock it, kill it, right? That's your main thing is they can't stop you for the most part. You have the stun advantage, right? Um, when you take away the Zen Yada, you can't burst anyone down anymore, which means that by default your fights are lasting. A little bit longer, right? And when your when your fights are lasting longer as, as goats, the other team is going to have more DPS in general at different angles, um, and that's what they want to do. They want to space you out. They want to make the fight take a long time, right? And they want to play the sustain game, and that's what that's what what you guys are really struggle with is you're not going to have damage to really, you know, be winning these sustained fights. So that's one thing that you really want to be looking out for when you're running main heals is you always want to have a zen with it. I would say, if anything, you want to sacrifice the Brig or the Lucio. Probably the Brig um, would be the thing to sacrifice for the most part, because speed boost is really valuable for getting your team into those positions, because as I said, they're trying to create space inherently, right? When, when they're running a defense against goats, because there's not very much range. There's a diva that can go knock stuff off high ground, but that's it. Your, your main defense against goats when you're not running goats yourself is, is space and range, right? So you, the Brig doesn't really give you a ton of value, because you can't get to them, really. Um, and Lucio can at least help the D.Va, you know, boop stuff off higher ground, things along those lines. So I think that's that's your guys' kind of biggest mistake here, is you're going to run into um, really not having enough damage to really do the GOATS thing. So you guys are calling Arissa, good. Um, so let me, let, me, let me reset the color, let me see the color button settings. Okay, so they're orange, you're turquoise, okay. Okay, so you guys are just all going to go feed after the Reinhardt. So let's, let's see exactly what went wrong besides immediately getting getting absolutely demolished. Um, okay, so you guys decided to push in. So one thing, this is where, so this is what I'm talking about. You guys don't have damage, right? So the fact, Star's making the first mistake here, and you can see it that it's in his health pool, right? You guys haven't That's even. Doc, actually, That's not me. Oh, it's not. I, it's really blurry. I can't see. I assumed. I mean, so used to you playing Reinhardt from day one. So whoever your main tank is, Mister, you said dog. Doc. 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 Okay. Like doctor. Okay, doctor. Doctor needs a doctor with that health pool, um, but he's making the first mistake here. So he's forcing this engage, right? When you guys haven't, he's he's half health, and you guys haven't even got to them yet. Your diva's probably probably low on matrix, just trying to help him out. Yeah, none. There's none at all. So you guys are already through half your Ryan health. Your Moira's probably about half piss, and then your diva's got no matrix, and you're still committing to this engage. Like that's a really really bad time. Like you don't need to do that, right? You don't have the you don't really have the cooldowns already. To really be able to commit to this fight, so it's like play a little bit slower. You know, you need to go play around the corner, back up, you know, get get rebuilt, kind of get ready to do a re-engage. But and, and, and see, that's the thing is, you guys don't need to take the initial first fight the second you see it when you're playing ghosts. It's a really really common mistake that people do. Um, that they're like, hey, I see them, we gotta go. So what, what you should do is you should realize, hey, they're running this bunker comp, and I call it bunker just because anything with Arissa is bunker because you're just standing behind a fucking shield, pressing E sometimes and, and doing damage from behind it. Um, not necessarily bunker is usually like, uh, what is it, Roadhog, Junkrat, Arissa, you know, just a high damage, not really going anywhere comp. Um, but anyway, so one of the things you guys you guys need to do is you need your main shot caller, main tank, main someone with a brain to be like, hey. We just overcommitted to getting here, but hold this ground, this little corner, right? You guys can do that to do like kind of a soft reset, but the, and that's the thing is you're taking map control, and I feel like that's something that's really not really, gosh, utilized at this rank very well. Is you guys 
go at each other, something happens, and then one team wins. But but you're pushing them back, right? Your 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 more your main goal here is to take these micro engagements to keep pushing your team closer and closer to point to get rid of the enemy who's margin for error, right? So it's like if you push to here, next next now you have another engagement, right? So you got two chances for this fight. The other team only got one. That's what's inherently bad about being on defense is that the attackers are always picking the engagement, right? So they they're pushed back onto point. They're kind of doing a weird little scramble thing. Right, because there's no really good, really good to hold on point, um, and then that, that's something that you guys need to be able to identify and take advantage of. Also, that your Ryan's been has a Discord orb, and he's gonna want to scrub that before he goes anywhere. He's gonna get burned down immediately. So that's something that you, one of you guys, um, ideally the main tank would would know this by default, because it's kind of hard to call him out for not going in or to tell him not going in. But you guys can take these micro fights, right, just to slowly move up and give give yourselves more margin for error, is what I call it a lot of the time. Because like this, you guys already had a bad engagement, but you can kind of stop. You can stop here, reset, rebuild, go in with full cooldowns, and try again. And you don't have to commit to every single fight just because you started shooting at each other, right? So you see here, you guys overcommit. Ryan gets burned down really quick. Let's, let's get rid of that little little picture here. Um, your Ryan kind of has weird offset. Your Diva's really weird offset. I know the call was on the Orisa. I don't like Orisa's first call, especially with no um, with no Zenyatta orb, because. There's no Discord, she's got 50% damage reduction. So it's going to take forever to burn through them, and especially, as we mentioned, your damage comp is very low. So Orisa's not usually a super good first engagement unless you have a damage orb on her. Uh, and that's something you guys need to keep in mind in general, is that this would have been a perfect time to just slow down, reset, regain heals, and, and you got rid of this Orisa cooldown so that you could re-engage and target the Orisa first really quick in about 5 seconds, right? So that would have been something that I would have definitely wanted to see too. Ananade's out too, so you're baiting cooldowns. And that's one of the things that you guys could have done, is just slow down, chill, bait some cooldowns, then got cooldown advantage, then gone in, right? So, and then you guys just kind of overcommit. That's either a get out or a whole team goes in and dies. I think that was a, probably a get out moment, because they're not they're not very mobile with the Orisa Diva so much. Uh, Hello Dragons, I guess. So it's good they're committing to ults. I don't know, so this, is, this isn't a fight you're going to win, right? Like... At least shouldn't win if they have any kind of focus fire. But you guys are taking forever. And let's just imagine, okay? Let's let's do some let's do some really careful analysis here, okay? Let's let's go to Platland real quick, and then say, hey, our Ryan's dead. You know, let's let's do this really long fight. In GM land, everyone goes and dies, right? It's 30, 33, 33 is the time. Everyone's dead by 33:25 or 30 uh, 33:25. Let's just say that's at max. It would probably be shorter than that to be honest with you. Or everyone gets out and they do a reset, right? You guys go in. You're at 3:33. Let's see how much time you guys waste on this fight. That you're down one person immediately. Let's see how much time you're losing by staying engaged. Just, just for fun. Oh, it's actually 33:38. Sorry. So, you see here, you guys are down your diva suit. You're down. Your Briggs overcommitting. It died immediately. So you're down two people. Your Zarya gets one, which is good. Um, so it's, it's kind of a kind of a really weird like 3v. I don't know what you call it a 3v. 3v5, but um, for the most part, and, and then you guys talk about dying, getting out, your, your Ryan's going back and recommitting, should get burned down pretty quick with the Zen Orb, etc, etc. Um, okay, so I guess Frost is just boosted, because they would have killed you by now, but you guys wasted a ton of time up here, right? Just doing this super long engagement. We're no good team, and this is what I'm going to tell you a lot of the time, right? Is that, I'll show you how to play against good teams, so that when bad teams do this kind of stuff, you can punish them for it, and then you're going to maximize your value against better teams, right? Any good team would have would have just staggered you guys and killed and killed you by now. Like the fact that Frost hasn't, especially with the Zen Orb and just not focusing firing, that's their own fault. Like, and that's a, that's a plat thing, right? But I'm, I'm assuming you guys don't want to stay in plat forever, right? You want to go up to Diamond Masters, whatever, you know. And then these are the kind of little things that will help you get there. But for the most part, you guys are going to burn about 20, 25 seconds every fight. You guys don't just go and immediately die in. And if you think about how many fights you get, right, every 30 seconds is about a fight. You burn 20 seconds, there goes another fight. So you're pretty much losing four to five fights every attacking round that you get full held just by staggering and not going in and committing to certain fights. that give you the highest probability to win, okay? If we back up, I don't even care if this fight works out, to be honest with you guys. If we back up, oh, a little bit farther back than that, to about right here, right? This is where you guys have no Diva Suit, no Rhine, no Brick. Okay, it's a 3v6, essentially. I know they got the Hanzo, big deal. So it's a 3v5, and they have defense advantage. How many times are you going to win that fight, realistically? Two out of ten. If that. If that. And how many times are you going to win it against a good team that can focus fire? Maybe 0.5% of the time, right? Like, once you start getting into the upper 
upper ranks. I, well, I even say upper ranks. I mean, like, 3,300 will punish you for this. You know, and it's not even that that hard. You know, they focus down his armor dais. You know, this is just this is just silliness. So, do you guys want to take that fight, or do you want to reset, come in at... You'd normally be coming in about right now. When, when's your ride coming in? I think it comes in, like, right now, just some YOLO shit. Yeah, there he is. So, you could be doing a full reset 6v6 or 5v16 fight at 315. Like, 18 seconds after after the engagement is how long it took him to get back. That's not a long time, right, guys? That's really not. So you can get a full 50... Let's call let's just call all 6v6 fights 50-50. I know there's ult economy. I know there's cooldown usage. I know there's positioning, shit like that. Let's call all, 50, 50, all 6v6 fights 50-50. Instead of taking this 3 to 5% fight that burns an additional however long this takes, you guys should be just resetting and starting this brand new 6v6 at 3, 3 15 Right, you just have such a better quality fight percent chance for that. So let's let's end up seeing what happens. I mean, I, I hope if you guys win, it's gonna be kind of funny. Um, I think we actually do win this. Yeah, but no, no good team should let you do that. And then that's kind of something that we that I worked on Frost on for a really long time. Is their focus fire turns to shit when they lose like one or two people a lot of the time. They all start brawling and doing their own individual things. I I don't know if Star knows. Yeah, there we go. It's because I killed three people. Yeah. So I don't know if Star. Do you remember when I was working with Frost for a while? Yeah. Yeah. It's this is what this was one of their big issues, and it's it hasn't really gone back. It's it's kind of gotten reset just because the flat division as a whole became less coordinated, right? So I wouldn't say that's something you want to get used to doing, but you know, it did work out. Luckily, I wouldn't recommend it ever if you want if you want to climb. Those are bad engagements, right? I was gonna say I play competitive a lot different than we play these. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that you're gonna notice is and. This is what a lot of people don't believe me on, is that the competitive ladder is usually more competitive than this because smurfs are a thing, right? Yep. You're going to run into a lot of, like, I would say 40% of your games, you're playing someone Diamond Plus if you're at 20, 2800. I, I don't think that's too far of a stretch. I think you guys could read roughly that percent, 30 to 40% of your games are going to have someone 3k or higher in it. Yeah. So they're going to do this little stuff, right? So if you're not doing these little things, you're going to stay where you're at. So that's that's what I'm saying. It's like if I'm trying – there's there's certain times where I'm going to say this is what you should be doing, and it might work out. That's great. But do you want to rely on like the 5%, 10% chance success rates, or do you want to give yourself the best chance to win a fight every time? You know. So anyway, let's see what they do. They're choosing a weird engagement point, and this is something that I don't really – this is one of the hardest points to goats on. I'm not sure if you guys know that or not. Um, what what are they running actually? What was their full comp? Um, they were running um, Zen goats oh, this, proper. They had a Hanzo though off first point. Remember? Yeah. But so they switched to Zen goats. Okay, so this is switching to Zen goats because it didn't work out. Oh yeah, because they were doing a risk. They were trying to do an Arisa Hanzo damage high damage bunker. Okay, so that's what they were going for. And they were really bad at it. <laughs> Don't say that. That's rude. Um, okay, so well, I'm saying that because we won and we were dumb. <laughs> you guys ended up winning winning this map? No, we almost did. Okay, well that's not winning, bucko. Um, all right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, let's talk about pre-engagement. Real quick, real quick, let's talk about pre-engagement. Um, so here you guys all are. You guys are all... Okay, this is not... I don't, I don't really like everyone riding cart. Um, you put one person on the cart, you guys go take map position. Map position is important. And I, have I talked to you guys about um, giving the enemy team free space? At all before? I think Star, do you kind of vaguely remember or no? Definitely remember, yes. I know I talk to them about that all the time. Okay, so and so you guys know the concept of just like, why aren't you guys standing on top of the castle right now, just shooting at them, making sure they can't just walk across the bridge and getting in position and denying as much ground as you can for free? Kind of the general mm -hmm. gist of it. Um, like it's a pretty simple concept. You never want to let them take any kind of free sight lines, um, ever. Essentially, you want to make them earn all their other places on the map, and you're never going to do that with five people on the payload. You're just not, you know. And I don't know if you've seen the ramping up of the speed of the cart for one, two, and three people, but it ain't shit after one. Honestly, um, it moves at like, what is it, 100 percent? Let's say, well, let's say one person's 100 percent speed, it goes up to like 116 or like 137 or something like that. Mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't make that much of a difference, you know, for for two and three people on it? So really, not a point. Um, also, I don't really know. As far as your comp, no one's really good to be on cart, if you think about it, right? Like, your Lucio needs to be AoE, your Brig needs to be AoE. I'd probably put the Brig on cart just because she can defend herself the best if they're running a flanker, which they're not, so it's really matter anyways. 
Uh, but you want your main healer obviously up with your team too, because they're not really ranged. So that, that's another issue with your guys' team comp. Um, do you guys know how to do the grab bomb combos and shit like that? I mean, I can't speak for them, but I know I know how. Okay. You guys know that you're trying to pressure the Rhine shield so that he can't shield, or you're making sure that your Rhine has your shift off cooldown so that he can shift the Rhine shield last second so that they won't have any kind of shield at all for the bomb. You don't want to time this together and talk with him about it. And also you want to try to make sure that your Rhine has shatter so that if he's not in position with these cooldowns right you have to be your doc your often it has to be have to be timing this or communicating it with your team so if you don't have any of the cooldowns that we mentioned then you want to make sure you have shatter so if the right turns around then he has to go to then, yeah to block a bomb behind them then he gets shattered and they die anyway so that's something you have to keep in mind um can i give you the cliff notes version right have i ever talked to you about the goats push and pull because obviously you guys are going to be doing a full of goats you goats right now no all right let's talk about goats push and pull all right so Gosh, this is this is just kind of what I call imagine goats is a big tug of war of health pools, right? You have well health pools and defensive vaults. It's it's kind of like a momentum gathering device for the most part, right? So how goats works in general is whoever loses a person first usually loses more often than not, right? But the main goal of goats is if your if your team's down on low or down low on HP pool or ult economy or something like that, you're gonna back up. Right, if if they get a discord on their Rhine, you guys can do a lot of damage to him. He's half health. Then you want to be moving up on them. If your Zarya is bringing down their Diva, who has no suit, you guys are moving up on them. You're, anything that gives you positive momentum, a grab would be good. Sound barrier is also positive momentum. Trance is positive momentum on your team. You guys are normally wanting to be the aggressors, right? The same is true for the other team. If they're running, you know, the same thing with Zen Goats. If they're doing a trance, if they are beating. If they just use Rhine Shatter and that you have people on the ground that you're currently defensive vaulting, these are all times that you are backing up. Usually pressing your S keys to try to and the reason you're doing that in GOAT specifically is because they are trying to pull right there, right? They're they're trying to they push themselves towards you. Pull them in, pull your team in so that they can they can finish you off. Because there's so much AoE healing with GOATs that it can be it can be kinda of hard to focus down targets, especially without the Zenyatta. Um, so if there's multiple people that are down on health pools, then they're going to be trying to be aggressive and take advantage of it before they can get... Because we can all agree, right, that Zen, Lucio, Brig do not heal burst targets very quickly. Except for Brig's E, which is very long cooldown, right? Like, there's generally no burst healing, for the most part, right? Yeah. That's pretty, pretty well known? Okay. So, if someone's down to, like, half to quarter health, the other team has time to push in on them with their Lucio speed boost... And take advantage of it and kill them before they get bursted back up. Because there isn't really burst healing, right? Unless they commit an ult to it. And that's why you see a lot of higher-end players. They see two people that are critical. They'll just throw out a Transcendence or a Beat or whatever. You guys build ult extremely quickly in the goals, in the GOATS meta. Like, we're talking, like, 30, 40, 50 second ults a lot of the time. So you guys can throw them away. I wouldn't say throw them away, but use them pretty, pretty, pretty leniently, right? There's no combos that you can really hold for. Um, obviously, Grab is one of them that you want to have either Trance or Beat for. Um, but for the most part, like, that's really the only combo that's going to happen, and Big Bomb gets rid of most of that anyway. So, that, that's kind of how you want to be treating your whole team, is, like, if they're, if they're going to be, if you're going to be pushing in on them, you got to be no, identifying your advantage and pushing in on it. And the second that they do anything that, that either mitigates, like, makes it even, or gives, puts them on the high side, like, just slow down and chill until you guys are back in a position that you're going to have the advantage again, right? That kind of push-pull method. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Any, any questions? Um... So I use like I did this a lot during this uh, little scrum as I, because I know Moira is not meta anymore. I used my ult. I made sure everybody was up on healing, and if they were, and we were, you know, we had the positive momentum, like you said, I would use it to like go behind them and piss off their supports. So like I killed Zen a ton of times with my ult. Okay. And I fucked um I fucked him and Lucio a bunch of times with my ultimate. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little mean, and I mean this in no, the no, nicest, absolutely, I mean this in the nicest please. way. That is the worst play to main, play worst way to play Moira and Goat's Comet. The absolute worst. Because if they are good, they are always bunched up. And if they are coordinated in any way, shape, or form, you will get burned down immediately. And once Zenyatas can aim, I actually when I when I play Zenyatta a lot of the time and Moira tries that, I kill them immediately. It's never really a problem, you know? So that'll only work until probably about thirty one hundred, if that. And then you're gonna start getting burned down really, really quickly. Um so is there times that you can do that? Of course. There's always there's always opportunities. It's up to you to determine if there's an opportunity there or not. But for the most part, I would say 90% of the time, that is a bad play. 
So something to keep in mind, um, especially if your team's relying on your Moira healing, which is really her big advantage in Goat's Comp, right? Is her, is her healing advantage. output. Yeah, because you gotta, gotta remember, your guys' win condition is not going to be like in the deep in the damage side right so you guys have to out heal everything to be able to get get away with it because their zen orbs just they're going to do more damage than through the zen orb you have to be able to out heal it and you're pretty much going to be timing your coalescence to sort of baiting them in a little bit to be over aggressive then you coalesce to heal your team really quickly and doing damage to them and they can't keep up with it because they can't burst heal that's kind of your 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 win condition quote unquote is moira right aside from the the just farming zarya bomb so that's that's kind of my opinion on it, um, and I've dealt with a lot of when you kind of hit like that, you know, 4100, 4200 ish area, you don't really run into a ton of Annas and Moiras, but they're there. Usually the Mercy mains are kind of going to them just because they do. It's what they do, I guess. It's weird, um, but something to consider that you don't really want to be playing flanky. And Moira is really good for punishing flanking characters. So if they end up going Genji or, you know. Um, Genji Tracer, you know, the, those characters are trying to get behind your backline. You have a lot of self-sustain. One-on-one, -on -one, she's really good still for it. Um, but it'll only work against bad teams and people that aren't paying attention. And and the amount of people that aren't paying attention will go down the higher you go. So something something to keep in mind anyway, right? And Frost should know better for the most part. So I know they're not really a great GOATS team, um, but the good GOATS team will be too tightly bunched to really get away with that. Actually, back, what was the... the Remember, if they're running okay, so they're running... Yeah, they're running true goats, and then you're running Mark. Oh, see, same goats, goats. Okay, so um, I'd like to see you guys on the top of the castle, uh, the dot, dot guy, uh, and, and they can't really get to you for the most part, but you can just kind of shoot down on them, and, and it denies them a lot of free space without getting pressured. You guys should just back up um, for the most part. So I would like to see the, st the fight start there. It's a big slam. You guys are committing a lot to it. Your diva's not ready. Um, and this is what you'll see a lot is grab's not getting a ton of value a lot of the time. Um, when you guys are running goats, you don't have bomb to combo with it. So I think that was kind of your guys' big... Big flaw there, I guess you could say for the most part. Um, let's kind of see if there's anything else that sort of happened here. Did they, I don't, did they commit any ults? Their Xenia has been up for a while. They committed bomb. Oh, I should be on, on the counter grab. It doesn't look like they is, is that a Zen trance? I can't even tell. The quality's not great. They are, they're yeah, it is. Yeah, so they committed Zen trance to that. So it, and this is what kind of sucks, right? And this is what I would have liked to see in this situation is you almost never want to counter or not counter. You almost never want to commit, grab, and shatter at the same time because those are your, those are two of the big counter action alts, right? That are going to force out defensive ults. You know what I mean? There's nothing mm -hmm. else on this team really aside from just raw damage output that's going to force them to commit their secondary defensive ult and use it will, right? So they're on the ground with shatter. The Ryan's going to pick a target, smash them into the wall. That should be a wrap. Usually the Zenyatta you want to pick. The grab is okay, I guess. Um, for having people bunched, but here's the here's the thing. You're killing your advantage with grab, which is keeping them bunched. They're running goats. They're going to be bunched. You're not going to have a hard time getting a four-man grab. You know what I mean? So if you commit both of those, Zenyatta Trance is going to counter both. So you're getting a two-for-one, in essence, right? And not to mention you didn't save for bomb, which kind of sucks. So you don't want to do that, um, where you're committing these multiple alts that are get countered by one, for the most part. Grab Shatter is usually not a good... They're, they're not complementary. Goats doesn't really have a lot of complementary as except for grab bomb. But those are the big compliments. The rest are just kind of raw, whatever the hell. So that's usually usually how these fights work. A lot of the time, is you guys are closer together first of all, and a little bit more aggressive. Your Zarya is a little bit more up with your Ryan a lot of the time. Um, but usually how these work is as they go is you shatter someone, it kills someone, right? The Ryan he needs to make sure he's going to be able to kill someone with the shatter or get Diva desuited, and then you guys just you play the sustained game, right? You slowly push at them because you have the man advantage, and you just kind of sleep, just kind of. War of attrition, I guess you could say. You don't need to like push in immediately. Most teams are gonna look like they push in really, really fast after they get that pick and wipe them really quick. But at this, at this kind of elo, the focus fire is not quite there to really get away with it. Um, but just utilize that man advantage for right. Play it slow. You guys are gonna have more damage incoming, more healing, and you can kind of just burn them down over time, right? You don't need to commit all these alts and just get it done right now. You know, you get that because your Ryan does the thing, which is which is kill someone. I need to meet this person. So your Ryan kills Azaria. So after you see that, I don't like what your diva's doing, watching the bomb. Why? Um, take a look, see where it's going to go. I would like to see your diva peel over to the Rhine to help them out. Even if you fly away from the bomb, that way you might get hit by it. It might do 200 damage or something. So um, would like to see your diva peel. Um, but there's already their primary damage dealer's dead. They don't really have damage anymore, aside from the Zenyatta, for the most part. But that's not really like 
going to help their front line so much. So you guys can just kind of war of attrition this, which you guys kind of just try to force the force the engagement. I feel like right afterwards. So or they did. Yeah, like they pinned your they pinned your brig, which is super unlucky. But I stunned him there too. I, I guess you didn't, Buckaroo. Really that is no, not I a good ult. Okay, I think that's pretty clear as to why that's not a good ult. So, if if you're if we're, so, why are why are we still engaged in this? Is the real question. We're seeing this weird trade. Oh, this is strange. I don't like I don't like any of the things that are going on right here. So you think one of the big problems we have is really light and stuff? You were lagging a little bit. What? One of our problems, I feel, is like we can't. We don't. Really, well, not, I don't say we can't, but we have a problem with noticing when a fight is lost. Yeah, you guys need to be okay with fights with losing fights. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, when the fight's done, call it a day. You know, because they they killed the Zarya, which is good. You guys are five v five, no big deal. Um, you know, your Zarya for your Ryan, kind of a kind of a fair ish trade, I would say. Um, but then you guys lose your Brig, which kind of sucks. Um, and then they kind of. So this is this is this is one thing that kind of is really unfortunate for you guys. You guys are so split from each other. There's like a Lucio like jump around over here like a little froggy boy. Um, you guys are so split from each other and shooting different things that you can't really you aren't going to be that team that comes back from these fights a lot of the time, right? Like you need to you need to be able to at least focus like punishing these Ryans that are going in and doing this and that they're committing all these resources to. Um, your Diva is also staying too far back a lot of the time. To be honest with you, whoever Ireland's Fox is. Um, they need, yeah, they need to be either high ground, getting ready to die back line and then harass, or they need to be up there with the front line. There's not a ton of in between. This, she has no damage at this range. You're a tickle gun, right? You're like, hey, I'm mildly inconveniencing you. Hope you don't notice me. Like, there's just no reason to be doing this. So, um, the demon needs to be more playing with the Zarya, the matrixing when she doesn't have personal bubbles, kind of a big thing too. Um, especially with the Zen click click clicks. So that's something that she needs to keep in mind. So and then. Okay, so you guys, you guys are super split, and, and everyone's shooting different things, and you guys are lucky that Frost is doing the same thing, or you guys would probably be getting pretty much wrecked right now. Um, let's see, so yeah, she's not contributing anything, for the most part. Like, see how split she is from the team? Right? Yes, yes, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Whole team's there. She's here. She's getting shot in the back by the back line. She needs to pick. Either get out. And go for a reset, or go harass the backline and kill the Zenyatta, or try to, or something like that. You know, because the brig is up here, so that's, that was an option. But staying in the middle, doing nothing. That's what it's what I would usually say uh, for the most part is that indecision is probably your worst enemy for the most part, because um, it's just going to mean that you're going to accomplish nothing over a long period of time. And over a long period of time is okay, but not when you have a little counter that says 422 that's going down and you got to push the cart so far. You know. Um, all right, let's continue on. Let's see what we got going on. So they were committing coalescence, which I don't really like because we're down a player. Um, and they weren't. They were. They had health pool advantage too. So you're just kind of using it as like raw damage, which isn't good. Um, this is an overcommit by the Rhine. That's turn and focus. Everyone should be burning down that Rhine. You're also seeing right now. Oops, off. Oh, French fries. Um, where'd that guy go? I think we're at 2:30. I want to see. Yeah, we're we're about right here or so. Okay. So you're gonna see that Rhine. Da -da -da -da. Pin in, whatever. It's not the Ryan pin in. You're seeing the you're seeing the disadvantage of not having a Zenyatta. When that Ryan pins in, no one kills him, right? Or it takes a long time to kill. You're you're missing that kind of instant burn down to punish punish a bad decision, right? That's something you guys are you guys are sacrificing with a speed boost. And I don't know if you noticed, but you guys have not utilized that speed boost one time to really chase anyone down when you guys had advantage. So either your Lucio needs to learn to be more aggressive, or your your shot caller needs to call for more Lucio aggression. Or you need to run Zenyatta. Because range is not generating any value, right? So you guys are back in. Da -da -da, having fun. They're down a Ryan. I think you're down a Ryan. So both teams are down a Ryan. Their Diva is kind of boosted. Fine. Um, your Brig keeps dying by themselves. And this is something that we've seen probably four times so far. I really wish we didn't have some donations or whatever the hell are going on the right, but whatever. It's me. What? It's me. Stop being bad. All right. <laughs> So your, your Brig keeps doing this thing where they overcommit without the rest of their team. Brig is terrible as a 1v1 hero against goats. You're trying 1v1 Ryan, you're dying. Trying 1v1 a D.Va, you're kind of being annoying. Trying 1v1 a Zarya, you're dying. Zen, probably dying, because they're going to peel. Um, for the most part, you are the mini Reinhardt, right? If your Ryan gets stunned by their Brig, you are there to make sure that 
like no one can really punish him. You're you're keeping people away from your main your main line and pushing in to help stun stuff when you want to be aggressive, right? You're just being that really really annoying mosquito. You are not a damage dealer. You're gonna be doing some of the least damage on the team, right? So you don't want to really be aggressive with Brigida. You're sort of like a little bodyguard when your team wants to be aggressive, right? You're just an, an assistant enabler, and you want to stay. You kind of want to stay almost. There's the Ryan, the Zarya that are gonna be leapfrogging. You kind of want to be in that little bubble. Right, like that's right, right in between them and the supports for the most part. But you can go in, take a couple steps, rally, whatever. You don't really want to be in these situations where you're dying first. Brig should really never die first. You know what I mean? The people that should be dying first are Ryan Zarya a lot of the time. So, um, their brig was killing us a lot. She was being really aggressive. So was that something you know, like our fault? We should have just Zenyatta. Said, Fuck everything else that's, and just killed her. That's that's where you can run into the issue a lot of the time, guys. That's if your Ryan isn't available to kill the Brig. She takes a long time to kill because she's annoying. Not effective, mind you, but just annoying. And you're sacrificing that by running this comp. Zenyatta burned down, two Ryan swings dead. With any any other kind of spam damage, right? So that's just kind of a situation that you guys brought upon yourselves, I would say, for the most part. Um, you just get, get better at punishing stuff. Like, there's no reason anything should ever be in your backline and goes killing stuff and being a problem, to be honest. Your whole team turns around, goes and kills them, and it takes maybe a second. To burn them down, and then you turn back, focus front line. That's it. So, but your team has to do the thing. Now, this is an infamous plat issue. Okay, I'm play, we're playing Ryan Zarya, right? Someone, let's say, or Zed Yacht or whatever in the back line is just like, hey, there's a brig back here, and no one even pays, no one turns and pays attention. They register in their brain that there's a brig behind them, but they don't do anything about it. Okay, there's a difference between hearing, listening, and applying. Right. Hearing is just simply, you heard the words. They didn't do anything to your brain. Listening means they're like, okay, I'm registering that there's a brick behind me. Maybe I should play slow. Now, actually applying that information to what you're doing means that you're completely, like, expecting your team to do the same thing. Right? You're like, okay, there's a brick in the back line, which means Lucio's going to go back to peel. Our brick's going to go over for stun. Our diva's going to die, which means I need to hold shields for straight forward. Right? Those are all the things that should be going through once you hear there's a brick in the back line. There is no reason a brick should survive in your back line and goats for any amount of time. It just shouldn't. If your team's doing that, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, why are you guys up here? Why did okay? That's a bad re-engage. You guys are down, down three, pushing up, hard reset. Okay. You guys have just stat. You guys have staggered this fight for about a minute, and that was really, I think, the highest you guys had. It was a four v five. I think was as close as you guys were. So you guys are just kind of feeding over and over again, building a lot of support charge. So, let's see here. So, yeah, I think that's one of your guys' biggest issues is not knowing when a fight's lost and just getting out and, and doing a full reset. Also, Zenyatta would be punishing that Ryan, which kind of sucks. Just don't leave the spawn doors if you don't need to a lot of the time, especially with goats. I think that's what we were yelling. So yeah, they're they're doing the thing that I always yelled at them to do was to quit playing like flats. And if they're gonna be if they're gonna be walking out of the spawn doors one by one, because this is what everyone does at this range, right? They go to this square. Or they go stand over here or right around the corner. You can punish so many teams just by pushing your whole team up to there and killing the one or two people that are standing there with their fingers up their butts, right? And that's what you, that's what they did to you. So good on them. But you got, when you're playing goats against good teams, you will die, and you will die a lot doing that because Lucio speed boosts the thing, and you can't run away. Okay? Easy enough. You guys got the run, which is good. They're running away. You guys are not speed boosting. Okay, you guys comboed bomb shatter. I do like that bomb placement was bad. Um, but that's no big deal. It's a big slam, which is good. You guys are burning him down. Good. Get the Lucio. Good. Diva. Good. Go get that Ryan. 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 Go get the Ryan. Go get the Ryan. Go get the Ryan. Go get the Ryan. Go get the. Ryan, go get the so this is this is silly. Whatever your diva is doing, stop this. This is you don't need to chase down that target. What is a diva gonna do by themselves? Realistically speaking, against goats, what is a diva gonna do? Nothing. That's the right answer, buddy. You did it. Nothing. The diva does nothing. Okay. Well, if, even if they go fly on top of the castle and be annoying, then you send your diva up there to go tickle them while, they, while you have healing and they don't. Like, there's, there's no reason to doing this. So Ireland's fox gets a gets a, a bad a, a, a bad not a gold star. They get a red star for this this performance right there. Um, they had a good bob earlier. So I mean everything has an equal and opposite reaction, right? Um, yeah, this is good. This is good. Perfect. Don't chase that diva. No reason. No reason to chase D.Va, okay? This is what you guys do in this situation. You let that D.Va do whatever the hell they want to and go destroy that Reinhardt's life that came out. Because 
if they're still in the kill feed, that means they're at least five seconds away from spawning a lot of the time, right? And their spawn's not not far away, but not super close. But you see that Ryan, you speed boost at him. I can guarantee it's not going to take much more than five seconds to get to him, right? Especially because he's going to hold shield and backpedal to avoid more damage, not just turn around and pin out like he should, because he just used to charge to get back. So that would be a big a big change you guys can do. Let the diva do whatever they want. She's eventually going to go back to a reset position, and if you guys are still pushing into their spawn, you're going to run into her again anyway. She's just coming back with full health, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So this diva, bad kitty. But you guys probably all stayed on payload. I see three on payload anyway. I'm gonna fucking kill you guys for that. Um, that should be a one, and you guys should be pushing into their, making them regret doing a lot of things. Why your diva's not being aggressive here, I have no idea. Star, why you went to go die to a Reinhardt, I have no idea. Um, I, I know what you're trying to do. I, I know what you're trying to do, right? But your whole team needs to go with you, right? You are not a Reinhardt when you're playing Brigida. That's why I need to play Reinhardt. So then play Reinhardt. Doc wanted to play Reinhardt. Well, why don't you guys decide who's playing Reinhardt and work your team around it? I'm too nice. I'm adding Mango. He's He was our Lucio in this. Oh, cool. Um, but yes, he had a really good peel onto the D.Va, which is good. Your Zarya's doing a good job in general, for the most part. Um, you guys are a little slow on rotations and things along those lines. But yeah, that, that Reinhardt in general definitely needs to be more aggressive and then you, you if you're playing brigita if you realize you're ahead of the reinhardt a lot of the time it usually means you shouldn't be where you're at i would say a lot of the time but you guys are too slow on this punish right the reinhardt got back the brig got back half the team is back you can't really burn them down quickly anymore and you have that, those couple people still on cart so you're going to be in a kind of another 50 50 fight which already down two is probably not going to go super well for the most part so yeah then they're playing rally then you're doing a sin then they're going to stagger oh yoy. Okay, this is this is what we call. I got a quiz. What should you guys do in this situation? Hard reset. Hey, there you go. Jump off the map. Stop being a mole charge. They don't need it. They got plenty. Um, it's right now. It's a three v six. Just freaking get off, get off the map, or get out. Baby Diva should go off the map for sure. Um, but just get, get off the map. Stop, stop giving them all the all this time. Right. Let's see how much time they burn. I mean, it's already didn't take too long to die. But yeah, just go off the map. Don't give them all charge. Just start again. You know, leave it to good. Cold star returned. Mango's getting out. You guys should be more out. Remember what happened last time? More out. Because and this is something I'd like to take this moment really quick. Okay. A GM team that sees four people up on goats will go in and ruin your life immediately. So just keep that in mind. That if they decide to be GM for a play, they will wipe your team when they have four people standing there, and they will do it quickly. Okay. I, think I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this right here. I'll tell you that. I do not like this. <laughs> guys, haven't even, guys haven't even gone anywhere yet, right? Remember where the cart was at? It's on the bridge. Like, somewhere, like, over here-ish. Maybe freaking in Narnia. I don't know. Um... What was the first thing that you guys saw when you walked out the door? We didn't see us walk out the door, actually. What do you mean? You guys just walked through the door. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't see it because it was like glitching out. Oh fuck! Okay, well let's 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 look at it again. D was walking out the door. You see this? Yep, yep, yep. What's the first now. thing she sees? That's a diva. diva. And where is she at? Up top. Where's the rest of her team probably or should be? Up top. Guess what they're gonna do when you walk across the bridge for ten seconds? Drop down and meme us. Either that, oh. do damage to you, build ult charge, whatever. <laughs> Here, here's the, here's what I'm getting at. Whatever the fuck they want to. Okay, they're doing whatever they want, and you guys are just gonna walk down across the bridge and take it. And it's gonna suck because you're not gonna get to pick your engagement. Remember the first fight? I said you want the main thing you want to do as attackers is pick your engagement. Yeah. You are throwing that advantage out the window by going down low Sweet. right here. So should we have gone, like, in the castle up the stairs and go, met them? Go, go kick them off high ground, and then determine which is the best course of action, which would probably be to go to the little tiny room, or it might be to even loop over, might be go through the tiny room, or it might be better to go down here and then go loop across bridge, depending on if you got to pick or not. Depends on how aggressive you get. It's all, all dependent, right? But you guys are walking into giving yourselves the biggest disadvantage for no reason. It might work out, granted. Um, because I said Frost kind of, they go full derp sometimes. Oh, what's, oh, yeah, see, see, they do what, they do what they want, right there. 
just did they just did it and you guys had to sit there and take it, it sucks. Right? Then you guys are in the house of pain, it sucks. So you guys are getting picks, which is good. You guys are countering it really well. But the one thing I want to point out is that you wouldn't have to do this whole clusterfuck, right? If you just went in the first time. Make sense? Right. Yep. That's kind of what I'm getting mm -hmm. at. One of those situations where you guys countered it well, but you wouldn't need to counter it well, and you could have been proactive instead of reactive. But you guys you guys actually did a really, really good job of countering it. I'm very proud of you kiddos. Adi was good. Die on cart. Attempt to die on cart, I guess. Get booped 19 miles. <laughs> Are they going to recontest? They just burned a lot of alts. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. They should Mm, they should. I was gonna say I think they did. They did recontest. You guys didn't burn down the Lucio. We we're gonna solo coalesce him. An interesting play. I went through it yet, and I I think I attacked a Zen or something <laughs> on, around the other side. Oh, no, I'm just giving you shit. But, okay, so you guys did you guys did the bad thing. The plat you guys you guys platted. Um, I'll show you how. Is that your team decides let's go this way, let's go this way, and let's have our diva stand on the car. <laughs> And what's the thing about goats that you want to do? Stick together. Hey, did you guys do it? No. No, oh, epic failure. Guess what's going to happen? That we're going to die. Yeah, you are. That's going to suck because you guys have a Lucio. You guys had a Lucio pick. You had it. It's a free fight. They, they literally, that Lucio walked out the door and was like, I'm going to contest this card and die and screw my team over for next fight. You guys are going to free push. You guys are going to push that card as far as you want. That's going to go to like around this corner. You know, maybe we can get to the very. Why is it so. Oh, is it. Is it like. What happened here? Whatever. It's like transparent. Wild. Um, regardless, you guys could like push it around this corner, got to like middle, maybe even. You know how it like does this little thing, right? That, like that. This is the pathway for the cart, right yeah. there. You guys would have had it like right here, maybe even got to reset around this corner, you know. But guess what happens instead? We throw. Yeah. <laughs> you guys fucking die. Oh, that's why it's all silly. There we go. Instead of having this with let's say 220 left, right? Because you decided that I have three doors to choose from, and this is just our make-believe door that's going to happen soon. Let's send a couple healers here. Let's send our Brig, a Ryan, Zarya here. And let's put our Diva right here. You guys are like, man, I didn't really want to have that cool advantage and have map control and positioning. Let's make sure the cart's like right here at 220. So let's see what happens. I mean, I'm just being a dickhead, but it is pretty accurate for the most part. What could happen, right? These are the little things that add up over the course of the game, right? You know, like, you guys would have been set up in a really good position, had a couple clean, clean fights. Committing a diva bomb? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Ooh, look at Legion. Look at Legion go. Give him some suck. Give him some suck. I will say Bent Up's actually the hidden MVP. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but he's providing a ton of focus fire damage on things out of position. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's doing a very good job of that. That is he's that, usually our DPS. That is why you're getting away with more in the back line, just so you know. Um, so you guys made it work. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. I know Azaria is in, absolutely empirical mm -hmm. or whatever. For, so, yes. For I'd like to point out that you guys are still up here doing that thing, which is awesome. Worked out well, but good teams wouldn't let you done that. But think about think about how bad that would have been if you're at 207 and you guys are just coming out of spawn crossing the main bridge. Yeah. That's how much yeah, you that's how much you guys could have been thrown away, you know. And that's a long walk. It's like it's a good it's a good ten second walk, you know. You start adding ten second walks together, next thing you know you could have like seven fights. Uh, all right, so let's see what happens here. They blue trance. So okay, okay, let's let's talk about the push and pull thing really, really, really quick because it's, it's pretty pretty smart, um, easy. They're the down Zarya, great down Zarya. Zarya being down is awesome. Their main damage dealer is done. You have a Zen, so it's kind of equalized for the most part. Um, the Ryan's in a corner. Why he'd be there, I have no idea. They're committing rally because they have to because they're down all. So right now, okay, right, right now, right now. You guys are pressing your S keys, and I don't like S keys. I'm not an S key kind of guy, right? They're committing rally. Even if they're trancing. That. What? They're trancing. You don't, you don't, you don't like S when they're trancing? <laughs> I don't like S key in general. Okay. But when they're trancing and rallying, you best believe that you, that S key is freaking melted down. Because that is not the time to engage. Because they pretty much can't die with goats, right? Nothing can burst damage through anyone. Um, I've seen it happen like one time, where a uh, what was it? It was like a, a Reinhardt got burned down. Like a Zen, like full right clicked him, and then like a Zarya right clicked him, and a Ryan fire struck him all at the same time. And he died. And it was, I was like, what the fuck? That happens. Um, it was cool, but anyway, 
that's not the time. Your, your Reinhardt needs to be like, okay, maybe this isn't the time I want to be doing this. Because you're just going to sacrifice a lot of shield help for the most part. And be in a really good position. To, one thing he wants to watch out for is when they're trancing and rallying and stuff like that. That's a really good time for them to pin because they know the Reinhardt's trying to get out. So you got to kind of keep your shift key at the ready. As weird as that sounds. All right, so let's see what happens. Your Zarya going off because he's a freaking animal. Didn't get eaten. Good. Good job. Good job. Good job. So they had to commit sound barrier to counter the grab. Good. Yeah. You can't combo the shatter and the grab to get both the ults canceled. Good, good, good. So you guys are kind of getting burned down. 5v5, I think. Uh, doesn't look too bad. You guys, I'm just guessing. Ah, okay, breaking the back line. DV did a good job of peeling. That shouldn't take that long for your whole team to turn around and kill her. You know? She shouldn't, that shouldn't be a thing that you go to turn around from the front line because you're low and you see a bring back there. It needs to be better communication and awareness, and that is something that... I think Star has heard me say this probably about 40,000 times. Before you engage, clear your back line. Right? Yep. Always clear your back line before you go forward, because if your back line's dealing with stuff, they can't help your front line, they're going to die anyway. Star Lord's also wondering who he stunned. Impressive. I got... I got charged again, so man. So that's, that's good got, that they committed got... grab here when they were up like three people. Silly Frost, baby. So as you can see, Frost isn't unbeatable by any means. They're making a lot of dumb mistakes, you know. All right, so it's see. just making less mistakes than everyone else. I their guess. their micro is better, and when I say micro, they're they're kind of or not micro. Their macro is better for the most part. And when I say macro, I mean like not their inter fight stuff. You guys are pretty even. Once you guys get brawling and stuff, I would say you guys have had the advantage on a lot of fights you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have won. Um, but they're just overall macro is better. Their ult economy, their like kind of target focus is a little better. When they're engaging is a little bit better. You guys clean that up and you'll wipe the floor with them. No joke. I feel like one of the things that they have down that we don't is like committing to a to a decision if it's like yes. bad. Yes. And that is something that I had to harp into them for a long, long time because I didn't like to do it because they were always just like, well, what if that's a bad call? And it's like. Let me break it down to you guys. Six people committing to a bad call will work out better than four people committing to the right one a lot of the time. Right? So mm -hmm. a lot of the time you can make stuff work that shouldn't just because everyone did it. You know? And if you guys have that coordination and blind, I call it blind trust. When you're on a team, you just got to trust each other. If right now, if right now your, your shot caller is just like, Zarya, I want you to grab like the little rock right here. Then she should just do it. Without even thinking about it. Weird call, but maybe your teammates see something that they don't, you know? And obviously, like, you guys are all trying to win, so they're not going to throw out troll calls for the most part. Um, but that, that should be the kind of, like, um, that should be the kind of trust that you guys have, right? Like, someone says grab, you just do it. And obviously, there's, yeah, like, that's what I'm talking about. And there's going to be, like, little micro stuff. Um, like, if, if you're playing D.Va and they're matrixing over you, you're not going to grab, like, that second, right? But if someone's like, we need to commit grab, then you're going to be looking to do it ASAP, right? Stuff like that. Um, that's a big shadow. That's sh Once again, Zenyatta would have burned down that Ryan in a heartbeat, but he had a good pin anyway, so that's good. Uh, I, I really don't feel like Mango's getting a lot of value still. Um, I just feel like he could be adding a lot more as Zenyatta. I don't know if he plays him or not. Uh, but I don't I don't see you guys really rushing in off your speed boost. You guys are winning that War of Attrition I'm talking about, which is impressive because you don't have the damage boost so much, but you're using, you guys are using your healing advantage, right? Playing slowly. And when you guys are doing that, you're not really utilizing speed boost a lot of the time until you're going to chase mode, which isn't really super often, so. He plays Zen a lot more, and he's he's much better as Zen. Well, then get him the fuck off this little DJ. Okay, that is a ambitious charge. So you guys are down two people. Go die. Go die. Go die. Go die. Don't commit sound barrier. Why do you commit? Okay. Don't go die. Go die. You have time. You have to go die. Go die now. Quickly. Die, thank you. Okay, so let's, let's just look at that fight really quick. Okay, so you guys had 45 seconds at this point, right? You guys pull your full teams up. You are know, down the Reinhardt. You guys are going in off Coalescence, which is good. A, a bomb, which kind of sucks. That gets two 1.5. You know, two people are dead, so it's a, it's a 4v5 right now. Not really the time to charge. Uh, but 30 seconds left. You have, anytime that you see 35 seconds left, I make a mental note. <clears throat> what is the likelihood we win this fight? If it's low, I'll just go die to get a clean reset. A lot of the time, because it's gonna be 10 seconds to spawn, 10 seconds to run out, and then you can you don't have to stagger in onto the cart, right? So about 35 seconds is when you want to make that decision, 45-ish or so, and then kind of do a really quick recount in your head, like, right, okay, is this fight really winnable? You know, I would say no for the most part, with with kind of looking at your pools and them committing stuff. I see where you're committing sound barrier because you think that you can't die and reset. You have time, so you need to, you know. 
Um, plus, you guys are losing the fight anyway, so it won't get you anything. Um, so that's something that Mango can work on, is just knowing how long it takes to get out of spawn. And if your Lucio stays alive, even, or mm, that's bad, that's a really late death. He should have died with the team so he can speed boost everyone back. So now you're probably going to be in that gotta rush onto cart last second situation, right? So, because they don't have, you guys don't have time to speed boost and really contest this. So that was that was his kind of small throw, but just know how long it takes to get places is kind of what I'm getting at. All right, round one done. Any questions? Oh, where do babies come from? I don't know, man. That's that's a question. Virginias. <laughs> Virginias. Okay, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. What about you, Star Lord? Any questions, buddy? How do you think Doc is on main tank? Well, I mean, ah, it's hard to judge from a round for the most part. Um, I feel like he's in a rough spot because of your team comp, honestly. Um, yeah. I think he's a little too. I think he does the thing where he's really way too aggressive when he shouldn't be. Um, but I think that's running. Yeah, not having a Zenyatta was a big issue for that too, because he's not really. Can't really do much more than be Mr. Shield Man for your Zarya. You know, I didn't see him really get pinned into your back line or get, I didn't see your team really get big shattered. So that's good. Um, I wouldn't say he's bad by any means, but I wouldn't say he like did amazing, but I said your team comp kind of worked into that too. You know? It's very hard to, um, to Reinhardt against someone, that, a team that has a Zenyatta running goats when your team doesn't. Excuse me. I'm just going to continue on through. He can, he'll come back when he comes back. I think for the most part, you guys are kind of, kind of noticing some, some similar things happening for the most part. Yeah. That's a bad, yeah, see, that, that's a bad charge by him. I do see that a little too often, where he just decides to charge in. He should probably unbind a shift key for a couple games. Kind of, because, for the most part, when you're playing Ryan, like, how many fights, like, do you really do you really win that you start off by pinning their Ryan? Like, realistically. Like, into their Not team. A lot. You know? Yeah, it's, like, never. We're very, very limited for how many times that happens. Um, the shield hold's okay. They kind of pushed in. Just swing around, throw a fire strike back up, and reset. Especially if you're discorded, you're going to get burned down so, so fast. So there's no really reason to do any of this stuff that he's doing. He's obviously not timing Zarya cooldowns either. So I would just say, like, especially in Goats, there's so many things that can just cuck you, you know? Like Zarya bubble, um, getting booped by the Lucio even to go into some weird spot way behind your team. Zenor dying on the way, you know? There's just no really reason to be doing those kind of pins. So I would say Doc needs to just not really bind his shift key for the first, like, half of fights. Um, if Orion's behind you and you want to turn and bring him back to your team, then that's a good pin a lot of the time. And then, so, so Frost just did that thing that I was talking about, that where I said you don't need to commit to that fight just because you have an advantage, right? Like immediately, you guys had their Ryan dead, or like, sorry, they had your Ryan dead. So he could just played slow, got full health, full bit out cooldowns, and gone in with their man advantage, you know. But they didn't. It's like stuff like that leaves the door wide open for you guys to fuck them up. So now it's now it's a, now it's a bleh, five v five. You are over committing a lot of the time. You need to play with your Zarya a lot better. You're the break, right? Yes. Yeah, play with your bird. So when your Ryan goes down, play with your Zarya. Kind of like be your bodyguard so she can't get like beat up by a brig too easily. You guys do really well in these brawls though. You see that? Like once you guys are in the brawls, like like just kind of focusing stuff down, you guys do a really good job. Better than better than Frost is doing. But one thing your Diva could do a lot better in general too is when they get low health, rotating to backline and just playing more of a more of a peel role if that makes sense, right? So like let's let's go back real quick and see how she could play this zero. Well, full health, full health, great, 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 great. Be aggressive, play with Zarya, you know, boop the Diva back. I have no idea why, but um, you know, kind of she's kind of playing back line, but she's full health, so she could be like up with your Zarya trying to fuck shit up. You know, soaking in some damage for Zarya would be good too. Um, and then like no one to get out. Like she has boosters off cooldown. I don't really like that push in, but there's no reason to really fully commit there. So now she wants to back up, keep backing up towards back line, back line, back line, back line. You know, and so give your time, give your healers time to get you back up to full health. So she can improve on that quite a bit. Um, you guys are chasing down the D.Va, which is good. So you notice full teams going together, not just the D.Va individually, which is good. Um, and your Ryan should 
completely unbind shift key while your diva is getting back into suit. It seems to be a call from your diva saying, hey, I, I don't have the audio on, to be honest. Um, I find it kind of distracting for the most part. Um, but just in general, you do need to be like, hey, you know, I'm blank to suit, blank to suit, okay, I have a 5%, like, play a little slow until I get back in, blah, blah, blah. So back in suit, and I can be more aggressive, right? So I like to this right in general for the most part. Like, at the start of fights, you need to just play like the diva's out of suit to begin with anyway. So good stuff right there. Your Ryan needs to be a little bit better about shield. Okay, so one thing, this is just a Ryan thing. In general is they need to be better they're the holding shield before fights so much so that you're not gonna have it when you're actually in engagements right not necessarily the best idea for the most part so like the other team's far away you already got cracks showing so it's like recharge that shield a little bit just tell your team you're gonna drop shield you know don't be to the point where you need it constantly because he's gonna be a thousand health they're gonna be at two thousand you guys are just not gonna have as much damage to be able to soak up that they do you know so just something to think about um, I don't like that at all, what your diva just did. I, that's a, that's going to be a no from me, bud. Um, I want to see it. Did she, did she, was she no health, or did she just press Q as, like, a defensive ult? <coughs> I, I think she just did press Q. We yeah, counter. she did. Okay. You guys use B? We, we counter grabbed. You guys had I'm hearing B? so many. I'm hearing so many. I don't like what Diva did. <laughs> you guys used B. Well, Your Diva, Diva was at 1,200 health. Yes. And she pressed Q. That's a lot of free damage to soak up from the other team. And instead, you replace it with 150 and a bomb that kind of explodes after three seconds or however long it is. Um, I think they were looking for grab uh, grab bomb. That could be it. That could be it. And then in which case, fine. That, that's that's okay. I don't know if you guys were tracking Ryan's shield, but it was up at very high health because you guys had that health that shield disadvantage at the beginning, and they were going to be behind the shield anyway. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I don't really like Bomb as a counter to grab probably 19 out of 10 times, uh, just for that reason. <laughs> out of 10. So, there's something to think about. Unless you're doing like one that's like behind them from like a weird arc or something like that. And then Jag did a good job of just shattering down everyone the second it was done. Um, but you guys are still winning the brawls. Like they're they're making the right plays, but you guys are still winning the brawls because you're you know just doing better player stuff. You know, if you guys clean this up, you'll be in really good shape. But yeah, it, I would like one thing I'd like to see your diva do as well. And this is just a pet peeve of mine. Turn your waypoint opacity down to like ten percent. You know where they're at, right? So that way you just know it's on your screen. It won't get in the way. And, and it's really it's something your brain kind of blocks out after a while. But it's really annoying seeing that on your screen, and it'll actually block some character models sometimes that you wouldn't normally see. So, and that's just a general tip for everyone that's in a competitive environment. Turn the waypoint opacity down um, to about 10% or so. Turning your music and stuff off. Yeah, it just helps it helps give you that little bit extra awareness, and then you, know, you can see a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it might seem like I'm picking on the diva, but that's just because they're first person. As far as I'm watching Lucio be roasting them to Moira, whoever's whoever's first person it would be, they'd be getting. Oh, I, kn I know you would destroy me if you were watching me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Everybody right, so let's, girls Moira. Let's see, let's see what we got here. So you guys are doing a good chase. Um, Star Lord, stop dying ahead of your. Stop dying when your Ryan's not dying. Stop it. Bad key day. Overextending. Um, especially with break survivability, there's no real reason to be dying first, in my opinion. I died in their spawn though. Easy clap. Yeah, but now they can just walk at you. Easy clap. Like they're doing. See all this? Literally your fault. <laughs> Literally your fault. They didn't have to commit grav. They did because that's just what they do. But all this is happening. This is this is your fault. All those things. And then Damn. Pinky has to be freaking toxic like that. What do you say? Oh, just beat the shit out of you? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have gone in when your whole team was dead. How's that for an idea? Damn. Grandmaster bringing the pain. Hate to see it. Alright, so let's go back to the start of this fight. Alright, so why are we... Why are we leaving the spawn and going straight when... We got that right there. We got that, in case you can't see it, is a dead Brigadurp. Why are we going to keep going straight? Because what's that thing that I said they could do? Push up on Leave us. one on payload and walk at you? Yep. Now see, they messed up. I don't know if you noticed, but they had two on payload. Now that gives you a little bit more of an advantage. Because there should be one. However, your Ryan's up there, your Zarya's up there, your Diva's up there, and your Lucio's here. What were the two things that were dead in spawn? 
Greg and Moira. <laughs> so, <laughs> excuse me. They're gonna you're gonna have solo Lucio heals and try to win this. Let's see oh. how it goes. Ryan's dead. Okay. Diva's flying around. All right. Not bad. They can shatter for some reason, or maybe a break's done. I'm not sure. You guys gonna brawl it out? Ooh, that that went low. Oh, it sucks. Are oh, you committing coalescence? Uh, Ryan was low, so that was you're going for. Diva gets you suited. Okay, okay. Did you see this clusterfuck you guys walked into though? Just by pushing up for no Absolutely. reason. Absolutely. Do you guys see the just massive cluster that's happening? And and here's the one thing I would like to clarify too. Okay. Is that instead of being back here with your team in this weird ass maybe you're gonna win fight, maybe not, and do you see where the card is? It's going through the gate right now. Instead of doing all of that, let's let's do a hypothetical. Okay, I love hypotheticals. Let us imagine, just for a moment, that we did the the, the thing. Okay. We came out of spawn and then let's say Devo is just like, man, let's not push up. Let's go get high ground. And you guys walked your happy little asses. From right there, you went all the way around. The reason you go there is because if they push through this little door to try to chase you, guess who's coming right out of spawn? Oh. Oh, so then your full team's up when they're trying to punish you, and then it's a full fight, and they're going to have one on payload, so you're theoretically up, man. Isn't that cool? Okay. So now that we got to do that, let's say we go up the stairs and we go get high ground. Okay. Let's say, once again, theoretically speaking, this whole project takes 25 seconds. Now, I don't know if you remember what the time was when that other fight was happening. I sure as hell don't. But I'm guessing it was more than 25 seconds. Um, but let's say we did that. Okay, you guys can do a full, and I mean a full fight. At the, at, how many times have you been playing this map and this fucking little happy ass gate with this stupid little door and this stupid little door block you guys for like a couple minutes? Not all, not all the time, but... It, you, it, it's happened before, right? Like, it, it's where you just get on a bad alt cycle or something like that and you're stuck there. You guys could be having a 6v6 fight at a choke. Instead, you're doing this clusterfuck, you know? There's no reason. That's not my, that's not my pointer. <laughs> there we go. So, that's what you guys could be doing. So, let's say at 3.30. Let's, let's even go 3.20, just to buy you guys a couple seconds. Let's, let's see what you guys could be doing instead. You know, but let's see where you're at, relatively speaking. You're down your Ryan. You're... I think you guys end up killing their Ryan or something like that. So the Ryans are dead, and then your Diva's out of suit, and whatever. So 320, we can admit this is a clusterfuck, right? Yep. Instead of having this, you guys could be standing on high ground, picking your engagement for when they come out through the doors. Not too bad of a situation to be in, right? So that's what I'm saying. When you, you don't want to get punished, because Frost will do that. I coached him a tiny bit about how to do that stuff, and I think Jag kind of ran with it, which is good on him. Um... But they're gonna be they're gonna be aware of it, right? And the higher you go in, in Elo, the other people are gonna be aware of it too, and they're gonna fuck you up. So your poor diva, it's actually coalescence out of nowhere. Vent up is doing a very good job of doing damage despite half your team being dead most of the time. So good on him. But now you guys are finally grouped and going for it. Good, good, good. Yeah. But do you see how far they are along too? Where the cards at? It could have been a choke engagement. It's kind of what I'm getting at. Which would have been a higher probability than whatever the hell ended up happening with this. Frost is just doing that thing where they chase people and they, they get all discombobulated and they stop talking in the middle of a fight, you know. Or Jag just literally says the name of whatever he's swinging at at the current time. So everyone's switching targets multiple times and nothing's actually dying, you know. It could be one of those things. So, but as I said, once you guys brawl, you guys do good. Like, I actually do like that beat, honestly, to counter the shatter. I, assuming you guys had trance for that? I guess I didn't really need it. Have it then. Who are you running? Like running the same thing. Oh, I thought you guys you guys were Zen for first point. We were? Yeah, for a little man, but whatever. I thought you were for a quick minute. I might have switched off in the spawn screen. I don't really look. So this is a full reset. Going here. Da, da, da. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna throw this out here. I'm just gonna throw this out here. Okay. Your Moira is just dying, which means you're going to be spawning for another 5-10 seconds or so, and then walking for another 5-10 seconds, right? Which means you guys are willingly walking into a 5v6 by leaving right now. That is something that Frost, do you know what Frost is doing? They're like, hey, they're walking out. 
On a 5v6. Let's go get him. Because that murderer just died a little bit ago. So you're just walking into, like, let's say a 40% fight by being down a player. They have someone on payloads, so they're not having quite as big of an impact, otherwise it'd be like a 30% fight. But, you guys are walking to a disadvantage for, a, what, 3 seconds or something like that? For time game? Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it. So, be, be a little bit more aware of your spawn timers. I don't like that bomb at all. Um, let's see here. She killed the Rhine by landing on him. That's pretty cool. <laughs> what is going on? What? So I don't have any idea. Just can... You have a Rhine pinning on this bridge. <laughs> yeah, right? You got a Lucio? Up there. Up there. You're coalescing behind your D.Va, who's not ready to contest. I don't... I don't really know what this is. It's not good, but I don't really know what is going on there, but you guys are not going to burst anything down or do anything productive with what, whatever's going on here. I mean, you guys might win the fight, sure, but what? You know? You're going to down your Zarya, then you guys kill the Brig, I think. Oh, I killed the Ryan. Yeah, there you go. So you got a Coalescence to do some damage. That's cool. But yeah, you just hear Ryan just go Neum here in a second. It's like, What? Okay. Yeah, uh, he got the pin. I mean, Grant, he got the pin. Okay. So moment, a uh, moment for the doctor up there. Okay. <laughs> now, do I think that he would be contributing a little bit more by being on cart with his diva? Yeah. I mean, also if your Lucio was down here with your diva. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, but there's just no synergy there synergize with your teammates you know work, work on the same things accomplish the same goals even if you guys want to take high ground because the, the card's really not that far so maybe doctor's brain is just fucking massive and he's like i'm gonna get rid of that high ground so we can shoot them all across the bridge build our old charge and, and re-engage when you have six people coming through, when our when our fifth and sixth person are coming through this door maybe that's what your big brain teammates thinking right but all everyone needs to commit to the same thing that's kind of what i'm getting at because that would be a good play to be honest so communicate commit be on the same page. That's kind of what we're getting at here. So, um, this is gonna happen. How your diva hasn't been burned down yet? I have no idea. Um, oh, there we go. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Then, poor Star Lord just got booted. Uh, that's happened to me way too many times. Um, your Ryan's getting booped as well. I don't really. Why they committed grab when they're up three people? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but. I think they're BMing us. I think you guys kind of threw that last little we let, we last little fight them. there. And are you guys going to walk outside and go die real quick, too? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. we did. It looks yeah. like that's the play. I think that's, all of us did. And yeah. they capped it. So, do you remember that thing I talked about, about pushing the cart for free through the little S bends? Yeah. So instead of doing this, what could be better is... Making them push through those three little doors of a choke as a full team, perhaps? Right? So knowing they don't have grab, yeah. and that you do have, probably have grab, because Bent Up's just been an absolute animal. Instead of maybe contesting the cart, because remember too, okay, remember as well, your little arrow thing's over here. And they don't have a ton of time left after that cap, 243. If you win two fights at that choke, that is a huge time bank loss for them. Right? We're talking like 45 seconds apiece, it's a minute and a half, so they're going to have a fight left, essentially. Right? That would be huge than the benefit that you're going to get by holding that second point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's something you guys got to think about as well. Now, if you... You know how, like, uh... I'm going to draw real quick. So you know how, like, you, there's, like, the gate right here for King's Row, like, the castle, and it does this little this stupid thing? I would completely mm -hmm. disagree if the cart only made it to here. Right? In that case, go for it. It's going to give you guys a huge advantage if you guys can hold it. You know, it's going to make it way more defendable. Blah, 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 whatever. But you guys got the cart to, like, here-ish, I want to say. Maybe here. I don't remember exactly where it was at. You guys have some fights. You guys can do a full a full engage fight at the at the doors, lose it, come out, fight it, and have another shot at it, you know, without having to rush. So there's just no point in doing this. You're going to give them, you're going to make it so they only have to win one fight, essentially. That kind of sucks. Because you guys are brawling well, you know. Yeah, so the cart is about right there. That's a good guess, huh? Why'd you? Yes, master. Why'd you? Why'd you coalesce? With curiosity. Where was this? Hold on. Let's let's hit the rewind it's button. It's healing. What's that? 
I don't remember this part. I think it was healing. Yeah, maybe. with that coalescence, I wouldn't remember it either. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I'm serious. Here. I'm yeah, fucking retarded. So, I don't remember none of this shit. Let's go through this. So yeah, you guys are coming out here. They're still pushing through the doors, and we just decide to coalesce right there? Yeah. I probably thought I was healing something. Yeah. And then, yeah in my head, I was probably like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. Yeah, I won't make mistakes, but that was a not good one. Um, the Ryan goes in. We are not punishing that Ryan that likes to pin for no fucking reason. Just fucking punish him. Star, that is where you, as Brig, need to be standing next to your Ryan. And when they miss that pin, you stun him immediately, your team burns him down, he dies, you guys push. It's like clockwork. Every fucking time. Okay? Yes. My apologies. <laughs> I did, though. I, oh, maybe I'm shattered. Not that time, you were actually shattered. Circumventing that, coalescence would be pretty handy right about now. <laughs> oh, oof. I can't stun Ryan's, apparently. It'd be better. Oof. Alright, so you guys got rolled. Do you see that kind of issue, though? By, by, by overcommitting to that, that second point, you guys really only got, like, one fight to work with on that. It wasn't really a good quality one, for the most part, because you guys played a little, little too aggressive, and you let them be a little too aggressive without punishment. Mm -hmm. So, the things... They, See how things compound so easily? Like, the little things add up. And that's what I mean, is that, like, plats, for the most part, in general, they're aim... There's a lot of people that aim diamond level, easily. But they, they don't do these little things that add up and create a big impact over the course of the game, you know? Yeah. Then you guys gotta do this run-out spam thing, which you guys might win. I mean, you guys are pretty good at brawling, but... It's a very low percent chance. So I hope that bent up can just go ham. Oh shit! Wrecking Ball, let's go! Ham and gameplay! Spin to she win. Just, she does it for stall. Okay. We asked her what was up with that. No, oh, no, it's good stall. It's ham this is a good pick. Yeah. It's a good pick. Mm -hmm. right, don't talk to you about the pick. But one thing that she could make an adjustment on. Boy, that looks funny. Um, <laughs> one, one thing that she could make an adjustment on too. You guys are all making adjustment on this, okay? You don't look how far away the cart is still. It's a decent chunk, right? Don't send your. Whole, you had three people grouped up, right? And a rallying br Star Lord, I swear. Um, you had three people grouped up. Okay, let's let's watch these deaths at high octane speed. Okay, I, I think most of your team dies here, if I remember right. Star, do you or do you actually die or do you pop rally on card? That'd be different. Then I won't yell. At you. No, you die. So yeah, I'm gonna yell at you. Um, Star Lord Doctor's dies. Your Lucio's doing a great job delaying. I don't know who delays for having this for a long. So then everyone dies. That guy might be you, Legion. To be honest, doing some doing some doing what? High high octane delay work. So. Oh yes. Yeah, they're yes, not moving the card. You're doing a great job delaying. Okay, you're doing exactly what you want to. Be on cart. Be annoying, right? Everyone doesn't need to come out immediately. Just it. it we're gonna commit that Armoira is gonna die. Okay, in this situation, Star Lord doesn't have to commit to this fight. He can be hanging out, like within striking distance, like kind of outside this door, just waiting. And and I know for a lot of time, I'm like, oh, don't send one person out to wait. When you're in this situation, if you have to touch cart as a last ditch effort by yourself, you have to go for it. You know, your Armoira's doing a great job. Except your Armoira's dead. Uh, that you will be remembered for delaying on cart. Okay, <laughs> you wait there, Star. You wait for your Zarya. You wait for your Lucio. They all stand there and they just kind of keep subtly grouping until your Mora dies and you guys have to go in with like four meters left. Not too bad, you know. Your Ryan could have done the same thing. You could have done the same thing. Instead of having these people trickle out, you could literally be having your Mora, who's still alive, I think. Um, you could have came out with your Ryan, your Rallying Brig, your Zarya, and your Lucio. And then this Hammond would have got there pretty quick. That, that's actually not that bad of a recontest, right? Like, there's a chance. Not a good chance, but there's a chance. So your your Moira finally dies after all that, right? You could have been having your engagement right now. You guys are all starting to go in now. Could have been Zarya, Brig, Hammond, Reinhardt, Lucio. And with Rally, mind you. Pretty, pretty okay chance compared to Solo Hammond, right? So mm -hmm. that's something you guys can think about. It's just like you don't need to stack. When people, you'll, you'll hear an odd call every once in a while. It's called stagger your deaths. And that means that, like send one in, wait for them to die, then send whoever's up in to go die kind of a thing. Um, and you're just kind of staggering that death one at a time because there's that little delay after someone dies that it takes a card to push. And it's significant, you know? Um, so yeah, your hammer should be win spinning to win would be the play here. Ooh, big coalescence. All right, so we're doing that. Uh-huh. Well, the good news is your team died relatively at the same time, so you guys should all should kind of go in at the same time. You got shattered, so it's a bad day, so you're actually going to die anyway. Um, 
yeah, there's not really a lot you can do about this. Besides, every, everyone should have gone stall comp for the most part. Goats is kind of a stall comp, but Lucio, Briggs, good. Moore is good. I mean, it's not really a lot you can change. Except maybe the Zarya, but I think he wanted to hold on to all. It's probably like 84, I want to say. 65, somewhere around there. Yeah, 64. So, anyway. Um, that's map one. I think this is map two. Well, that's the first map we looked at, right? Mm-hmm. Are there any questions? And I'm not going to watch Jax play the game because that's probably what he wants. Um, questions, comments, concerns. Um, probably, probably want me to like take Adderall or something to calm down. I mean, one of the few. I have, I have picked up. Like, I really fucking hate off support. I have always hated off support. I probably will always hate off support. Mm -hmm. But I have picked up Zen because I played him once and I had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'll pick him up. Fuck it. But. I still want to play Moira because I love her, and I just think she needs a rework to be useful again. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has her so, place. I mean, to be honest, like, her, but her place is if your team's getting heavy dope for the most part, and you're not getting a lot of peel support, which is mainly her self sustain is, is the big yeah. thing. Yeah. So if they don't have a ton of flankers, Anna's usually just a better pick overall, um, just because of the utility. The anti heal's big, you know. Nano boost being able to save someone with slow health is big. Um, sleep can be game changing if you do a mid all a lot of the time, stuff like that. So. Um, little things you think about like that, you know. Um, but Moira has her place. And don't get me wrong. Like if you guys are playing Death Ball, remember when Quad Tank was a thing? Quad Tank Moira Lucio was a thing. Yeah. You still can do that. A lot of people don't because they're like Ghost is better, which it is. But you still Quad Tank, be fine. You know, if you guys are coordinated and just Death Ball it out. You know, her her AOE heal is really beneficial a lot of the time. Um, but that, that's the thing is like her AOE heal. I mean, Lucio and Brig are two AOE healers already. You know. Moira has a little bit bigger output, but for the most part, her coalescence is one of her bigger issues. It's just not great in a lot of situations because it gets out healed by any yep. good players, you know. Um, and then the healing output's good. Don't get me wrong, um, but it's not as good as transcendence or sound barrier. And the rally, mm -hmm. a lot of the time, it's not as good as either because armor is just kind of broken in general. Um, and it hits everyone that's in the AOE too. I mean, unfortunately, Moira's coalescence can go through people if they line up, but if everyone's like in a kind of a weird circle, then it can be kind of hard. But I do think Morris Coalescence can be used as an offensive all the time. I said make them overcommit to your Ryan, coalesce your Ryan, and you can just kind of swing away and do whatever he wants. A lot of time it'll work out. So, um, but yeah, I would recommend picking up some kind of off support. Be a good idea. If you guys are going to be a GOATS team, you guys just not be a GOATS team. I mean, go 2 2 2. A lot of teams are doing well not running GOATS, you know? Um, just to play around it right with, with, with spacing and, and things along those lines. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just decide what you guys want to do and go, go done do it. So. Um, what about you, Mr. Starlord? Um, I mean, I don't really have any questions. Yeah. I, know I, I perform poorly. You done being a boosted brig or what? <laughs> boosted would insinuate that I'm in a... Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got him. I mean, brig's a, brig's a pretty easy character mechanically, but, but fundamentally, like, what your job is, I mean... You know, it's not the hard, not the easiest thing in the world. So a lot of people just play them at lower ranks because they feel a hard time focusing them down. So, um, all right. Well, in that case, I'm gonna end the recording for that map.